And here they are for the national semifinal. The winner of this game to play the game following between Louisville and Houston. Thurl Bailey will go up against Fair, and Fair got the tip. Well, it really, Richie Wilder didn't give a signal to either player. Bailey wasn't ready, and uh, Terry Fair did an excellent job. And here's State starting out in a zone-type defense. This is Fair, the man we mentioned, the tallest man at six foot seven, an excellent shooting ball club, this Georgia club. Okay, now we wanted to see the first man through what happened, and when Fleming went through, Derek Wittenberg stayed with him. So you've got Wittenberg playing Fleming man-to-man. -man. Let's see if Sidney Lowe stays with Crosby. Now what you've got is a little diamond and one. Wittenberg on Fleming, the other four guys are playing zone. Open his banks, James Banks, and the first shot doesn't go, tipped up by Fleming and rebounded by Cozell McQueen. Interesting defense to start with. Here's the long-range bomber. Now, Derek Wittenberg, really, there's no limit to the range he has outside. The best thing about it, he can shoot without the dribble. He comes out of that West Regionals, the most valuable player, Thurl Bailey with the rebound. Here's Sidney Lowe, the all-time assist man at North Carolina State. Straight he man and Wittenberg were high school teammates. Straight man to man, and here you have Fleming playing Wittenberg. That'll be some matchup. Fleming reaching in, and Wittenberg is two of two. Now, a good move by Hugh Durham to put a bigger man on Wittenberg, because you want to get him to try to put that jumper up over a bigger man. He gives a small man trouble. Now, you see this defense. Four guys in the zone. Crosby, the sophomore, tucked up and in. That's Lamar Hurd, a senior at 6'5", that followed in Georgia's on the scoreboard. Georgia has great quickness on the offensive rebounding, a tough team to block out. This is Lorenzo Charles, how improved he's been. He arrived at the right time as far as Jim Balvano is concerned. Here's McQueen, he walked to the ball. No, wait a minute. We're gonna have a foul inside, and it's gonna go on Hurd, Lamar Hurd. Koza McCreen had to shock Hugh Durham by making that move down the lane. You can see he's put Lamar Hurd on him, who's giving McQueen a great advantage in size. But that puts uh, Terry Fair over on a man a little bit tougher to guard in, in Lorenzo Charles. The North Carolina State will inbounds. Wittenberg has started out this Carolina team, North Carolina State, so effectively. He's been shooting, Billy, 58% in tournament play. I think these coaches have really got some unusual defensive matchups here. Earl Bailey. Earl goes high for the rebound, and he's fouled. It's going to go against McQueen. Roselle McQueen trying to reach in, committing his first personal foul. He's one of two starting sophomores in the lineup. He's out of Bennettsville, South Carolina. Here, if there's been any word that's uh, really typified the Final Four this year, it's quickness. And Georgia has some of the quickest kids inside. Heard showing you there, going up for that rebound, beating the taller man to the boards. Here's the man they consider to be the best all-around guard in the Southeastern Conference, Vern Fleming. Now there you see the defense. Let's see, now, now it's a straight 2-3 defense. They showed that little diamond in one a time or two down the floor. Now it's a straight 2-3 zone. Thanks, a junior from Atlanta. Off to Crosby. He's a sophomore from Birmingham, Alabama. In trouble was Fleming. Coming out of there with it is McQueen. And in trouble is Lowe. But look how he regained his composure. That's because of his great upper body strength. He was able to hold up there. Sidney Lowe. He is, has an average of 7.4 assists a game. He's like a coach on the floor, as Balbano has said. Here he goes with a shot. And there was the double team on Wittenberg, and he wisely threw it behind his back to Lowe, who can make that jumper, even though he doesn't look for it often. There's a reach-in foul. It's going to go on Lowe. Thus far, Billy, North Carolina State, they're putting them up from outside. Well, they've won with the perimeter jump shot, and this is the thing that's really helped them. Here we see the pass on the inside. Good help by Sidney Lowe. He's got a lot of strength. And there's Terry Fair, who's got a lot of power inside himself. Second team foul against North Carolina State. North Carolina State has won eight in a row, and what an outstanding finish for Jim Valvano at 37 years of age. He'd like to continue it. And it goes. Fair rebound. Charles, and over the back will be Terry Fair. Now, the book on Georgia this year is they're too quick to play man-to-man. -to -man. You've got to play some kind of zone. But they have been shooting so well throughout the SEC tournament and in the regionals that they've blown people out of the zone. And today, Jim Valvano has gone to the zone. Let's see how long he can keep Georgia from hitting that outside shot. Full court pressure now. Thus far, North Carolina State is three of four from the field. Georgia's hit only one of six opportunities. 16.53 to go, first half. 
straight man to man. Here's a clear out for Wittenberg. Everybody else is on the other side of the court. Wittenberg with four points already. Trying to control the tip was Charles, and here they come, make a move. Here comes Crosby. Followed up by Fair, and the rebound claimed by Lowe. Now, Crosby's a guy that's been out of sight for Georgia in regard to his field goal shooting percentage. So far today, he's 0 for 3. They have to have his shooting. Oh, off to Kozell with Queen. The left-hander barely has it momentarily. He's up with it. Quite a big advantage for NC State inside, Gary. You can see that if the ball stays up on the boards and Georgia can't snatch it off the first time, State has a big advantage. That was two 6-11 men controlling the offensive boards. Biggest lead of the game now by six. The key here is will Georgia start hitting that perimeter shot? The zone packed in pretty deep. Fleming not known for his outside shooting. He likes to work inside. Banks. That was weak defense by Sidney Lowe. When a big man puts the ball on the floor, you got to play him like man to man. He let Banks go right around him. Banks led this team in field goal and free throw percentage this year. Sidney Lowe, an all ACC pick. Wittenberg, the most valuable player coming out of that regional tournament. Looking for Lorenzo Charles, who's been hot on the inside, but he's got Terry Fair on him, so he hadn't had a man guard him like that in quite some time. Well, that's something at 6'11 to have that kind of range. Thurl Bailey, he, would, he likes that 12 to 15 foot shot. 10 4. North Carolina State Fair rejected. That'll be goaltending. Bailey came from the weak side. Fair has got too much quickness for Kozel McQueen, and you've got a senior going up against a sophomore. There's just a lot of maturity advantage on the part of uh, Terry Fair. Good call by the official, definitely a goaltend. That was Bailey that rejected it with the goaltending call. Georgia going for the double team again. Good step through. Low pass on the baseline to Charles. What an improvement by this man, Billy. He was not contributing that much offensively, but he got into tournament play and has come on both rebounding and scoring wise. Incredibly strong inside, has good hands, and likes the power moving to the basket. 12-6, the lead by North Carolina State, 14-43. You see it on your screen. I'm looking for Crosby to hit a jumper here to get himself unchecked. And intended for fair, broken up, and it's going to be off of Georgia. It's Good. going to be North Carolina State's ball. Good call right off the foot. Jimmy Valvano refereeing a very animated guy. We didn't get Louis Parnasek in the final four, but we have this Italian. Valvano signed a new 10-year contract. Timeout, 12-6, North Carolina State leads it. He had a dance here in Albuquerque, and he won a trophy. Now, Jimmy, as everybody knows, has that uh, trust. He had, had that hernia problem throughout the year that many people thought he'd have to be operated on, but he's staying right in there. When you keep winning, you keep coming to the games. There's the turnover, and Georgia now trailing by six with 14-21 to go in the first half. Great defensive play that time by Terry Fair. Leads their team all-time careers in steals. Got great quickness. Fair, beautiful pass on the baseline. Hurd is fouled by Bailey. That's a pass that most basketball teams advise their players not to even throw. Cross court underneath the basket. But watch the great cut inside by Hurd. Gets it, has Bailey on his back. Bailey got the ball, but he also hit him with the body from behind. Third team foul now against the Wolfpack. At the line, Lamar Hurd. This guy was a roommate last year of Dominic Wilkins, who of course left school after his junior year. Out of Cartersville, Georgia. He led the team in steals this year. During that last play, we saw that uh, Thurl Bailey smashed the net a little bit. You can go ahead and hit the net as long as that ball is not down in the basket. You can do that. A lot of people think that's automatically a goaltend itself, but it's not. Hurd, who's a 67% free throw shooter, hits them both. Here's a full, full court zone press. First time we've seen that today. State goes over the top. Nice play. Bailey gets it off to low. The trap on low, and we're going to have a push up on Sidney Lowe. Great play by James Banks. Now, when he comes up on you for the double team, you're not only looking at a six foot five inch player, but a guy with a lot of strength. Normally, Sidney Lowe will bust right through a trap, but with the strength of Banks, he wasn't able to get through there. Good call. 11 teams this year, Billy, were forced into 20 turnovers by Georgia. And well, that's a good example of why. Actually, I think Mike Swanson will keep up with that today, and we'll see how far they stay on track. Coming in real trouble that time against McQueen. Almost stolen and is stolen by the Bulldogs. Thanks. Tough shot. McQueen tips it off to Lorenzo Charles. Georgia not shooting very well from the field. Look at this bomb. Wittenberg. Rebound by Lamar Hurd. 
bullet pass. Fleming. Oh. Now there's where Fleming is so tough because he can lead the Braden at six foot five. He's almost like a forward coming down there. Went right by Sidney Lowe. Too big for him to handle. You can see why Fleming led all the Southeastern Conference guards in field goal percentage, those kind of shots. Now we've got a 1 3 1 half court trap by Georgia. They've changed their defense. That timeout really helped Hugh Durham's club, and Hugh Durham wild on the sidelines. Wants his defensive intensity to pick up. Sidney Lowe. Rebound effectively by Fair and a chance to tie it up the Bulldogs of Georgia. Fleming down in a hurry. Rebound, Thurl Bailey. Tipped out of bounds by Fleming and is he quick? Now, against this 1 3 1 trap, Jim Valvano is going to have to figure out a way to get the ball inside. His team is really relying on the perimeter shot completely. He has a big mismatch in size inside, but he can't get the ball in there. He doesn't want Lowe taking that shot where Wittenberg does. Here they're back to the man-to-man, -man, so they're really changing things around on NC State. Crosby, a very tenacious defender, picking up low. Heard on Gozel McQueen, playing behind him and giving up about seven inches. Good pass. Lorenzo Charles Fair will come away with a foul. He almost pulled off the block. Normally, Terry Fair would strip the man of the ball there, but Charles is so strong in the upper body that Fair couldn't pull it away. Now watch, look at the arms on Lorenzo Charles. Normally, Terry Fair strips this ball, but Charles' powerful body was able to carry the ball up to the basket. Lorenzo Charles for the year, shooting 67%, but no one will forget the two clutch free throws he hit to beat Virginia in that regional. And you know, he had an opportunity against Wake Forest in the ACC's first round tournament to go to the line with two shots. The first one he threw up was a brick. Fortunately for NC State, he made the second one, and that really started them on their way to even get into the NCAA. Jim Balbano said if he had missed those free throws, he'd send him back to Brooklyn. Well, they'd have been in the NIT, I guarantee you. Substitution coming in now. North Carolina State has Alvin Battle, number 33, coming in, a junior out of Rocky Mount, North Carolina, and sitting down, the man we were talking about, Lorenzo Charles. Right next to him, Terry Gannon, the guy we expect to see back in here, shooting some outside perimeter shots. State stays in the 2-3 zone. North Carolina State by three. 12-21 to go. First half. Bangs challenges him. Great block by Phil Bailey. Oh. It comes to battle who's just checked in. Low. Back to battle. And he kicks it back outside. Good what ball movements. Goodness. Great defensive quickness. Georgia really moves those feet. Man to man here. There's Bailey's got Banks on his shoulder. He likes that shot. Bailey over Banks, and he has six points. Banks will not be able to play Bailey from behind. Bailey will go right over him. The other end, Banks tries one. Rebound. McQueen keeps it alive. Fleming comes out of there with it. Vern Fleming, a junior. He's out of New York City. This is the final four of quickness. There have never been four quicker clubs than you're going to see today. I mean, off to Crosby, you can't leave him alone. He can shoot well from outside. Georgia, 4 of 16 now from the field. Fair trying to go over McQueen. It's in it. Oh, I, almost thought, that, up by I McQueen. thought that ball was in there. Well, Georgia can test every outlet pass. But they're still not able to challenge that big forward wall yet. They're having a tough time with the McQueens and the Thurl Bailey's. Wittenberg. Outside, number 10. Now out on Fleming. Vern Fleming kind of fell asleep a little bit there. He realized it. He's shaking his head. He thought that Wittenberg was going to give up the ball, but Derek's a very savvy ball player. When he felt the lack of pressure, he took it right down the lane. Jim Balvano now makes the substitution. Charles will come back in. Billy, we're at about 5,200 feet. There is an altitude situation here. The teams felt it yesterday. How about the benches of these two clubs? Who has the advantage? I think NC State has an advantage here. Georgia basically goes six deep. They've got Hawtrey to come in and play that other guard spot. State uh, considerably uh, uh, in an advantage in regard to the bench. Richard Horan has checked in. Number 31 now for Georgia. Another foul. Fleming out of position a little bit there. Wittenberg broke nicely to the basket. That's his second 15 foul now against the Bulldogs. So inbouncing will be low again. Gary, you made a good point about the altitude. Fleming is being asked to do an awful lot today. Man-to-man -man guard Wittenberg and also run the attack. So if anybody's going to be fatigued, it'd probably be Vern Fleming. Queen breaks it back out to low inside. 11 minutes to go in the first half. Five-point lead for the Wolfpack. 
Richard Corrin in there on battle. Corrin gave him the great game against North Carolina. Lindenberg, after hitting those early ones now, missed two, heard with a rebound. Boy, oh, nice transition in a hurry. Banks. Rebound, Charles. Oh, he's going to try to penetrate. Kicks to his running mate at guard, Wittenberg. Sidney Lowell, of course, has the great experience, and he know, you know he comes down under control. A lot of the freshman guards with the same ability would charge into a man after making the pass. So Wittenberg makes it 17-10, and he's asking to yep. come out of the game. Wittenberg is fatigued. He's asked to come out of the game, and there's the backcourt scoring by Wittenberg and Lowell thus far. And there's Crosby, who just had the ball, has not put up the ball effectively. He's got to start looking for his shot. You know, Wittenberg had a 101 degree temperature Wednesday, so that's another thing that has to fatigue him. Not only the altitude affecting his play today. Crosby's got to start looking at the basket to put up that jump shot. There's Fleming. He's not the outside shooter that Crosby is. But see, Crosby's giving up the ball, Gary, and not putting any pressure on the defense, so Fleming feels he's got to put it up. 17-10, the favorite. North Carolina State with 9.41 left. Wittenberg again. Got a good hand in his face and still made the shot. He may be tired, but he hasn't lost his shooting on. <laughs> I think he waved to Jim Valvano saying, I'm ready now. He probably <laughs> caught his second breath, but he's going to come out to take a blow. Eight points in the ball game for Wittenberg. Thus far, Georgia, four of 19. They've missed six straight. Here is Banks. That's seven in a row. They tipped it up, and Banks has it again. Good hustle, followed by Corrin. They can't get it in. Tough break for Georgia. They battled well on the boards. Wittenberg again. Oh, he missed this one. And the line through was heard. He tipped it to his teammate, Corrin. He plays a lot bigger than 6'5". He used to weigh 160 pounds. He's pumped up to 185 now. Fair. We found right out there that Banks is putting that ball up on the jumper. He's being pretty well defended, but he's taking a lot of shots. Substitution. We mentioned Wittenberg. He's going to lead now. Terry Gannon will replace him. He is an excellent outside shooter as Jim Valvano's team leads it by nine. As Crosby wasn't looking for the shot, he'll give him a little rest. And it comes to Fleming. Fielded that like a center fielder. Kind of casual there, that ball can get by. Substitution now. Donald Hartree, number 30, is checked into the backcourt. Also, Corrin came in earlier, so that's about seven deep. He will sometimes go eight deep. There's Hartree, number 30, with a basketball. He's a freshman. He's out of Milledgeville, Georgia. Wittenberg getting ready to come back in. He got his blow, and he's ready to come back. Plus, he got the advantage of the timeout. Here is Banks. Great first step on that jumper. Nice follow by Corrin. Corrin was a guy, Billy, that really did a good job against North Carolina when Fair got into foul trouble. 18 minutes of solid play out of him. Here's an excellent outside shooter, Terry Gannon. He shot 54% of three-point plays this year. Here's Battle. Without Wittenberg in the game, State has a hard time getting a guy to put it on the floor. That was blocked partially. Boy, that's a long ways out, too. Bailey, and we're going to have a foul on Corrin. Reaching in Richard Corrin, a sophomore from Albany, Georgia. That's his first, and that's six team fouls now against the Georgia Bulldogs. Earl Bailey going to the line, 73% free throw shooter, primarily shoots the ball from the outside, doesn't go to the line that much, only been there 122 times for a guy that's uh, uh, primarily an inside player. You see how much difficulty Georgia's having that graphic a moment ago and hitting their shots. They trail 19-12. Nice pass out by Bailey. He still has Banks on his back. It's a play that NC State can make. They can play it for O'Bailey inside. Low with Hartree on him. Pass broken up nicely that time by Corn, and it's going to go off of NC State. Georgia will have the basketball, and that's four turnovers. Hugh Durham doing a good little officiating right there. Hugh Durham was here in the Final Four before in 1972 with a Florida State team, so he knows what pressure there is in playing in this outstanding championship. He's got that bench. He's got three fellows over there with some uh, experience in the, in the NCAA championship but because Eddie Biedenbach was an assistant at NC State when they won in 74. That's going to be charging on Banks. Banks colliding with Thurl Bailey. That's his first personal foul, and now 17 fouls against Georgia. I had State going to the line in the last one, but seven team fouls, and NC State not in any kind of trouble. Of course, the player control foul. They will not shoot the free throw. 19-12 with 7.21 to go, first half. Wittenberg 
back in now along with Lowe in the backcourt. Look and see if they don't try to get that ball inside to Bailey. Here's a clear out for Wittenberg at the top of the key. But right on him all the way was Fleming. See, the four men are down on the baseline. It leaves it all up to Fleming to play Wittenberg by himself. Wittenberg, you might recall, fractured his foot. He was out 14 games. A lot of people, Billy, thought he'd never come back this year. He is a tough kid. And in the estimation of Jim Balbato, there's never been a better competitor. Nice defense by George on Wittenberg. Even with a clear out, Fleming sat right down and held it. And they go to Bailey. Tough shot. And pounding the boards and a foul on Charles. He went over the back of the Bulldogs. Heard again getting good position inside. That's his first. Here they go inside. Great defense by Georgia. You can see going up. That's a tough shot. Turning against himself. And there's Charles coming over the back of Hurd. Substitution. Fair is going to come back in. Terry Fair. And going out of the ball game now will be Hurd. They'll give Hurd a breather. Well, you can see that Hugh Durham just shifting fellas around a little bit using that seven-man lineup that he's got. The key here, let's watch Crosby the first time he touches the ball, see if he starts to go up, put the ball up positively against his zone. Here he is. Crosby wants to take it, but he's yep. been very hesitant. Yep, he's just not looking for the jumper. Now this is Hartree. Push off. Rebound Bailey. Bailey really a force on the defensive boards. You see how well Georgia comes back and prevents you from making that outlet pass. That's seven rebounds now for Thurl Bailey at the 6-10 mark. Steal. Here comes Crosby. That might get him started. 19-14, Billy, for a team that's not shooting well, this Georgia team's right there. What surprised me a little bit on that play, and Derek Whitberg may be a little tired, he did not hustle back on defense. He just let Crosby go the distance for the layup. The Wolfpack now committed five turnovers, that last one leading to the stuff. Crosby on Wittenberg. Bailey, nice pass to Charles. Beautiful catch by Charles, because it was thrown right over his head. You never would have anticipated the pass. You'd have thought it was going to go up for the shot. Here's Crosby. He had that shot a moment ago. This time he doesn't get it. Low on the move. Back to Wittenberg. Great body control. He's in double figures with 10 points. 23-14. So all of a sudden, after cutting it to 19-14, they bump it up. And Sidney Lowe asking to come out for a little breather now. Maybe the altitude's starting to get to these backcourt players. When they have to make that run 90 feet, they get tired. That was a walk. Banks. Banks has not been hitting that shot. He gets this one. He got by with a walk that time, but he does have the great first step on that jumper. That's four points for Banks. Wittenberg in this game now has hit five of eight from the field. Four minutes, 45 seconds left until halftime. Dangerous cross-court bounce pass with all that quickness Georgia has. Hartree, a little push-off by Lowe that time. Wittenberg is open. Rebound, McQueen. Nice play. Quite a differential in size, Gary. You can see that. When Georgia can't get the quick, the quick leap, NC State's big people just grab that ball. But they've been battling that all year long. Now Banks is two for two. He may start to get the hot hand. He was outstanding in that East Regional. He has six points and 25-18. He was the MVP in the Regional. You can't get much better than that. Banks highly recruited by North Carolina out of Atlanta, Georgia. I think it was interesting when Banks won the MVP in the Cotton States Classic. He said, I really didn't deserve the award and gave it to his teammate, Vern Fleming. Shows you what kind of comradeship they've got on this team. Georgia last year with Dominic Wilkins. They lost him this year, but all the team realized they had to pick up the slack, and they've done it. Baylor, rebound, McQueen, and McQueen now going up and attacking. There he is coming from the weak side. And again, he's 6'11". The man he's playing against on the other side is 6'6". 27-18, the Wolfpack with the lead. Three and a half left in the first half. Banks, he wants the ball now, Billy. Tough shot right there. Good defense by State. Charles with the rebound out of Brooklyn, New York. He played at Brooklyn Tech. Let's see if we don't see a clear out right now. Jim Balvano, a very good timeout. The reason why, he thinks he has a chance to blow this thing open right here. Takes the quick timeout. The Georgia, all of a sudden, falling behind now by the count of 27-18. Last 
five years, four NCAA tournaments, some of that coming when he was at Iona. Billy George is still only shooting 26% from the field. They cannot win by lack of size when they're not shooting well. Almost a great steal by Crosby coming from back. Here's Gannon's jumper. Gannon is something from outside. He was outstanding in a Western Regional. Very seldom takes a dribble, just goes straight up from almost any range. That's not the way Jim Valvano planned it, but I'm sure he'll take that, too. And this is the biggest lead now for NC State at the 249 mark. 29-18. George has got to get Crosby to put up the jump shot. He just has been hesitant to take it. Fair. Nice power move. Terry Fair out of Macon, Georgia. Four-year starter for the Georgia Bulldogs. Here is Gannon. Same spot. Not the same result. Here is Baylor. What you have right now. Is NC State size just going over the top of Georgia's quickness. Eight points now for Thurl Bailey. Also eight rebounds. So he has really been a double-edged sword as far as Georgia is concerned. Jim Belvano changed his defense. McQueen with a rejection on Carr. Changed his defense and went to a trap that time. This North Carolina State, the ACC tournament champions, playing without. This man for 14 games, what would have happened if he had been around all year? Well, they played nine games this year against teams ranked number one in the nation. Their record against them is five and four. Pretty credible performance. North Carolina State, they won the title in 1974. That great David Thompson team. Gannon almost traveled to the ball. 139 left now in this first half. Gannon again. Rebound third. Boy, he can get up. Six nice. rebounds for her. Nice job by Hartree that time. Defensively helped out inside and still got back out to put a hand in the face of the shooter. Crosby. Going to try one. Just won't go for him. Rebound effectively. McQueen. Boy, has he improved since the start of the year. Now, the key for Georgia again. Crosby has got to hit that jump shot. One minute. Ten seconds left until intermission. 31-20. North Carolina State with the lead. That by with a foul that time, a reach foul. Normally that'll be called. They're in no hurry now. Less than a minute. Little spread here, a little four-corner type action. Probably going to take it down for the last shot right now, and you know whose hands they want to have the ball in. This guy here. Yes, sir. What depth they have. They have Ernie Myers they can bring off the bench. They have four excellent guards in North Carolina State. Yes, Ernie Myers is second leading shooter on NC State in terms of number of shots taken. Was a great score while Wittenberg was out. Hadn't even seen action here in the first half. And here's the other guy that comes off the bench so effectively, Terry Gannon. His high this year was 18 points against North Carolina. 24 seconds. You see it on the screen. Impressive first half by Jim Balbano's Wolfpack. Well, great hands by Wittenberg. Down to 15 seconds. Uh, there'll be the clear out coming up right now. Now, if Georgia tries to trap, it's tough because Gannon will be left open. Crosby gets the foul on the trap. That's his first. They're in a one-on-one -on -one situation. And Denny Crum. This is the third time in four years he's been at the Final Four. Last year, losing the semifinal game. And in 1980, they won it all. Cool hand loop. One of the nation's great coaches. Never failed to win at least 20 games. At the line, Wittenberg, 10 points, three assists. Derek, out of the Maryland area. In fact, there's three guys. They call him the DC three. Bailey, Lowe, and Wittenberg, who came out of the Washington, DC area. All three seniors. And what careers they've had at Robert. You don't think that uh, Derek Wittenberg and Sidney Lowe kind of have a feel for each other playing all through high school and then four years of college ball. Played for Morgan Wooden at DeMatha High. They call them the DeMatha Twins. And you can see the field goal percentage, but for the year, Wittenberg is shooting 79% from the line. I'm surprised State didn't pick up full court there. They gave up some valuable seconds. Banks, rebound, corn, and it'll be Three-pointer, three -pointer. Jimmy Valvano is living. His oh. team his team should have been full court pressing there. They would have occupied a couple of seconds and that would have saved them. That's a three point opportunity for Georgia. And so we'll have a free throw here before they go to the dressing room. Corrin with the shot able to get it in make it a 33 22 game and Valvano who oh, might have had some nice things to say at halftime will be furious when he goes into the dressing yeah, room. That's a big three pointer but when you are down on the other end and you've got an opportunity to put a full court press on to occupy some time on the clock. And you don't do it, he'd have to be thinking about that himself. Bailey committed the foul, which was his second. 
to take in at halftime. I'll say that much. Here's a double team trap now by Georgia. Not going to see a lot different defensively by Georgia. Let's see what they do offensively to get on track. Sidney Lowe had four assists in the first half. However, he also committed four turnovers, but he's making some things happen. But State only had five turnovers as a team, and as you pointed out in the first half, Gary, Georgia likes to force 20 turnovers a game. What's amazing, Billy, is four starters for Georgia this year shooting over 54% from the field, and as a team, they're 28 in this first half. What a reversal. Nice pass to McQueen. McQueen having the big game inside. Hugh Durham couldn't have counted on that. Six points now for Kozell McQueen. Georgia now trails at 35-22. The biggest lead in that first half was 13 points. State stays in the 2-3 zone. They're going to make Georgia show they can make something outside. Oh, Banks, first check that fair. Backed out of there. McQueen has really been a quiet and deadly figure on the floor. You notice how he used that rule of verticality. Kept his hand straight up and let fair come right into him. Nice play by Wittenberg. That ball was deflected, I believe. Out it comes to Crosby. Lowe is back. He's fouled by Sidney Lowe. Now here we have Derek Wittenberg walking down the floor. I think he is really tired out here, not only from the altitude, but also that flu bug that he had. He's really not motoring up and down the court. You heard the halftime interview Danny Crum had with Brent. He says it's no question it's a big factor in this tournament. He's concerned about his game coming up. That foul, by the way, on Sidney Lowe is his third. So he's the first to get into any foul difficulty. There's where it helps to have senior ball players. Uh, seniors can get in foul just like freshmen, but they're a little bit sharper, staying out of trouble. Three points now for Crosby. Georgia, three of four from the free throw line, as is North Carolina State. And here's the full court pressure. Now, Georgia hadn't had a chance to put this on often. This makes Good it even harder team. when you got to come out against pressure like that. Good double team by Georgia. Heard and Banks come up there and make the trap. Ten seconds are close. Boy, coming out again was McQueen. He saved what could have been a violation. Here is Lowe. Intercepted and a foul, and it's going to go on McQueen. Sydney, That's his second. Sidney Lowe tried to take that ball a little bit too deep inside. He had the jump shot. When he went inside, there was no passing lane. Well, Sidney Lowe is the guy that Valvano wants making that happen, though. He'll let him go in and turn it over, but he knows that eventually he's going to get the job done. He has all four years. As we said, the all-time assist leader at North Carolina State. New State still in the 2-3 zone. It's like a little momentum swing here in favor of Georgia. There's Bailey rejecting that shot. Thurl Bailey had eight points and eight rebounds in the first half, but now with a block shot. Came from the weak side again. The size factor prevailed there. I think State's going to have to go inside in this second half. Georgia's really picking up their defense on the outside of the perimeter. Here is Bailey with a great outside shooting range. Tipped it out, controlled, Banks lost it. He lost it. Good job by Wittenberg, stopping the team from taking off on the other end. Both Georgia and NC State really eliminate that break by stopping the outlet pass. Look at the comparison here. Banks in that first half just had a miserable shooting half. He was 3 of 15 from the field. Well, and back out the stabilizer low. Now he'll put one up. That's what I was talking about before, Gary. See? George is backing off, and when they back off, he's got to take the jump shot because the passing lanes are not there. He's such a wise ball player, he saw it in a hurry. Vern Fleming, he's been very quiet in this ball game. Long half, he had two points, and the foul. Now, Banks gets by with that walk. He's got one of those Michael Jordan first steps. We'll see it right here. He'll get the ball. He makes that little step on the walk on his fake and goes right by people. It's a very quick first step. That foul now is the third foul on Bailey. So Bailey and Lowe now have three fouls, and Balbano may have to use that depth that he has on the bench. Banks missing. 73% free throw shooter. Very solid player. Boy, I tell you, Hugh Durham has really built this Georgia team up, hasn't he? They had such a miserable tradition. And in the last three years, they've come on to go to the NIT two years, and this year, the Final Four. Well, the state of Georgia is producing so many outstanding basketball players. We talked about that team that Fair had. Here's the full court pressure. Lowe's tough at to the top in that press. Bailey wide open. Biggest lead of the game now, 39-25. Bailey with 10 points. Boy, Bailey's played a complete game today. And you see the difference in the two strategies. You've got NC State dropping back in the tight zone. Georgia trying to spread their defense full court. 
17 minutes left in the game. Crosby, they've got to have his outside shooting. That's the first time, Gary, he looked for the jumper as he was receiving the pass. They need that. Boy, he had a beautiful arch on the ball. 39-27. That's the first Georgia field goal now in the second half of play. Charles gets his hands on that ball. It's very difficult to strip it. Here's Lowe, ever the commanding force, setting things up to Charles back to Lowe. I don't think Jim Valvano wants Charles taking that jump. Lowe had a lot of pressure on him, didn't he, when Wittenberg went out. He had to take over more scoring than he was used to. And, of course, uh, Jim Valvano brought Ernie Myers into that lineup, and he gave him some great scoring as a freshman. He had 35 points against Duke, which is a freshman record. 16-19 left in this game. State really slowing down the momentum of the game here. Trying to get a little inside game going with Thurl Bailey. Well, they can afford to be in this position. They have the luxury of it. Beautiful. I'm surprised Crosby went out and challenged him because you don't want to let him go by you. Low with six points. In the fair. Too much on the ball. McQueen with a rebound. Jose McQueen is quietly playing maybe his best game of the year. That's seven rebounds for McQueen. He's only averaging 5.9 a game. The steal. Great slot from behind. Now, normally that's called a foul, but Crosby's good at it, and Lowe's going to have to be aware of him. That's twice now. Crosby's had the slam at the other end. And there's a foul on Crosby. That turnover a moment ago was the seventh against North Carolina State and six of them by Sidney Lowe. Sidney Lowe is going to be very shrewd in not using that reverse move right there. That's no surprise, is it? North Carolina State's been getting that scoring in the backcourt all year. And so is Georgia. And I think it's not that NC State is up. I think that Georgia's down. Look for the double team right here. Crosby coming out. Nice pass to Baylor. Not there. Rebound Terry Fair. He is strong, but he's been shut down quite a bit in this game. Banks, who needs to get the shooting eye back. Crosby again. Rebound. Out it comes. The low, he tried to save it. That's the eight turnovers. That wasn't there, but you can't really fault McQueen too much because he it looked like he had the long pass available. <laughs> and, and with this kind of working margin, 12 points, you know, you can almost afford to take that long pass. Jim Valvano's over there talking to the scorer's table as though he wants a little assistance. Hugh Durham, very perplexed. You can see as he stands, he is concerned what they can't and can't do. McQueen again. Yep, he is doing a stellar job inside. What he's doing so well is not trying to block the shot, but just play good position defense in the middle man on that zone. Wittenberg. He can go inside. 14 points for Derek Wittenberg. He's been averaging in this tournament over 20, 21-5. Georgia really needs to get a basket here. New Durham has to get a timeout to get his club organized. Crosby, they respect his Look at where that zone is, inside the foul line. That's going to be a foul on Wittenberg coming across. Gary Quittenberg committing the personal foul, only his first fourth team foul against NC State. And here comes Hartree back in. He played briefly in that first half. Sitting down will be Crosby. Crosby going out. Now, Gary, what happens when a team plays your zone like this and you're not hitting, the farther back they push that zone, the tougher it is to get that jump shot out of your hand. Just got to get that rhythm going. Two shots coming for Banks. Banks shooting 74%. He's led the team this year in free throw percentage, has eight points. Gary, I mentioned the great kids coming out of the state of Georgia. Remember Al Wood, the player for the University of North Carolina. Jeff Malone, leading scorer in the SEC this year, played with Terry Fair in high school. It's been a great state for talent. Norm Nixon out of Macon, Georgia. We're going to have a timeout with 14-18 left in the game. And here you have the full court pressure. It's been effective every time that uh, Georgia's run it, even though they haven't gotten a lot of turnovers. They've taken state out of their offense somewhat. Both teams showing some visible signs of being tired. They have oxygen bottles on it in the bench. There's another turnover, nine against them. Fleming, that's his game. That was not a good pass by Kozel McQueen. He underestimated the great quickness of Georgia to get back down on defense. Fleming now with four points, his first two of the second half, and they've got to have his scoring. Now, with this kind of pressure, Gary, you can look for for Bailey inside if they beat the pressure to have some easy baskets. Trying to equalize it a little bit. That's off of McQueen, I believe. No, they're going to get it. Yes, it is. It'll go to Georgia. 
Now there's the oxygen behind the benches, and I think some players are going to go to it before this tournament's over. Little momentum swing right here for Georgia. They have a chance to get it down below 10. Boy, to think they've been shooting this poorly, and they're still in the ball game, trailing by 10. Archery. Got to look for that shot. All the state players are inside the foul line on the zone. You've got to take some jumpers out there. Banks has not been shooting well. A little reluctant to put it up. He gets this one. And they're keeping the press on that. If they start hitting, Gary, it gives them an opportunity to set up their full court pressure. That's their best weapon defensively. They hadn't been able to use it because they hadn't been scoring any field goals. Seven points in the ball game now for James Banks. 13 minutes. A lot of time in this one. Big field goal opportunity now for State. They've been on a drought. Bad foul. Archery committing the foul. That's his first, second team foul against Georgia. Terry Gannon now will check in for NC State. And going out will be Lorenzo Charles. And it's a time now where NC State going to their three-guard lineup. Jim Valvano saying, hey, we're getting pressured. We need to get a little more quickness in the backcourt, a little better ball handling, and to have that third shooter. You can see Lorenzo Charles sitting down right there. Hugh Durham hasn't given up in this game, and justifiably so. Jim Valvano may be a little bit concerned now, the way George is making their move. <laughs> Defensive pressure really picking up. Gannon has one from outside in the first half. Tipped high. McQueen keeps it in play for low. He's been all over. Wittenberg on the move. Pass to McQueen. Zell McQueen having the game of his life. He has eight points and nine rebounds in this game. That time Wittenberg went up in the air. He really didn't. He was caught in suspension right there and was fortunate to get that ball off to McQueen. 45-35, and that's been a big story for NC State. The two sophomores, Charles and McQueen. And NC State changed their defense. They go man to man. There's a steal. Beautiful play by Lowe. Again. Wittenberg is oh. One pass too many. One pass too many. Archery off to Banks. Rebound. Fleming, and that's going to be a charge on Vern Fleming. Great play by Thurl Bailey. Again, the NC State players, instead of going for blocks, are holding good position. Here goes the shot up. Now, there's a push-off pin inside right there. Got by with it, but Fleming pushed off his own man. Now, there's Bailey holding his ground. Fleming goes up, commits the charge. Bailey again showing what a complete basketball player he is, drawing the charge. 11.58 left to go. A 10-point lead for North Carolina State. Wittenberg hasn't gotten those outside shots that he was getting earlier in the ball game either. And here comes that double team. Nice pressure. Steal by Lamar Hurd. Archery scores. And North Carolina State now in a little bit of trouble. 45-37. They've, they've got three guards in the game, but what's so tough with the three guards? They ought to get two here. Nice pass. Wittenberg to Baylor. And that's the fellow that will be at the end of it if they can beat the press. Houston standing by. They're awaiting the game. The tallest fraternity in Texas. By Slamma Jamma. They'll be coming up after this one. Different coaching philosophy. Some coaches wouldn't have their players anywhere near this gym during this time. Fair in trouble. Gannon comes up with a steal. Seven turnovers now against the Bulldogs. Now, Georgia can't afford any kind of play like that. You can see those double teams are so tough because they've got good size. Boy, McQueen hustling all over. Wittenberg open again. Eric Wittenberg now starting to ignite. He has 16 points. Well, Back now to a 12-point lead. You take the gamble on the press, and, of course, if you get beat, you got to pay for it. State goes back, changes their defense. Now they've got Wittenberg down on the baseline. So Terry Fair can out-rebound him down there on any shots that are put up from the left-hand side of the court. And watch Terry Fair go up on the boards against Wittenberg. Here is Fleming. He doesn't want to shoot outside. That's just not his play. Here he goes, though. Great second effort. Fleming is an outstanding rebounder. But he led all guards in the Southeastern Conference in rebounding. Ten point game, Bailey, and Thurl doesn't get this one. Let me know that rebound. We mentioned how he'll fill inside, he did there. He's out of control here, though. That'll be a charge. That's four on Vern Fleming. Gannon did a great faking job there because Fleming had him beat. That was a big call in this ball game. Fleming with four, and you've got Georgia one to keep the pressure on. He's a guy against Wittenberg. 
See if NC State clears out for Wittenberg now to try to get Fleming in a one-on-one -on -one situation. It'd be a smart move if they think about it. North Carolina still, North Carolina State still with the three guards. Here's Wittenberg, rebound. Oh, there, he really elbowed out on that one. Wittenberg's extremely tired right now. He normally hit that shot 100% of the time. Banks, a power move that counts, and he's fouled by McQueen. 13 points now for James Banks. He's continued to shoot the ball, Bill, even though he struggled in the first half. I would say the Georgia kids are quite a bit stronger right now than NC State. They're coming on. Here comes Banks down the lane with that great move he makes inside, gets fouled. Wittenberg, at that point, Gary, was on the other end of the court. He is extremely tired. That foul on McQueen was his third. Bailey has three. That should have been Fleming in the lane too soon. McQueen coming out of there. They're having to protect the ball. Both big centers very aggressive. McQueen and earlier you saw what Fair did. It's an eight-point game. 49-41. Wittenberg. Oh, check that low. Hesitant and walked with it. Now Crosby will come back in for the Bulldogs. We might see NC State for a few minutes go into a little delay game. Try to cut down this tremendous pressure that George is putting on them. They've got to stop the momentum one way or the other. And Hugh Durham has to like what his club is doing, even as you pointed out, Gary, they're shooting so poorly. Fleming is sitting down now with four fouls, and look how tired he is. Oh, he's extremely tired. That turnover was the seventh on Sidney Lowe, 11 against NC State. That's a good break, though, for Georgia. And there's that big step that Banks makes. Hartree tipped up by Hurd. He kept it in play. But the red and white of North Carolina State has it. You can feel the tension starting to grip this game a little bit. They're in every shot. Really the pressure now. 9-13 low from outside. Sydney low. 51-41. Low now. In the game with eight points. And wait a minute. That basket is not going to count. It's going to be charging. And again, Thurl Bailey and the inside players from state holding their ground. You see the good pass inside. Georgia really attacking. Now Terry Fair is going to go ahead and use that shoulder right there. He uses the shoulder. A little acting job by Thurl Bailey. He gets by with it. You know, Thurl Bailey is an actor. He acts in the summer in summer stock, and he's paying it off now doing the job here in basketball. A little acting. That's two charges he's drawn in the second half. Ten-point lead now for NC State. Well, Georgia traps as well as any team I've seen this year. We're going to see a great trapping team in the second game in Louisville, but they trap out of the man-to-man. -man. Sidney Lowe, he had one there earlier, kicks it back out to Wittenberg. You can't double-team low. 18 points for Wittenberg. Back to a 12-point lead. And there's that 2-3 zone. State staying in it. They're back with the bigger team now. They took Gannon out of there, so they've got a lot of rebounding power inside. Lorenzo Charles in the ball game. Nice power move by Fair. Hand on the ball by Bailey. McQueen was there, but I think it was Thurl Bailey that blocked it. Great block by Thurl Bailey. Came across again from the weak side. 8-14. And foul. Crosby is fouled. Him. I think we're going to see Jimmy Valvano want to use some of the clock right now. 16 fouls now against Georgia. And here we see this, a great crossover step by Terry Fair. Puts the ball down. McQueen goes up, but Bailey came across. You can see Bailey almost hit his head on the back of the backboard. Great Thurl play. Bailey has played the best all-around game maybe he's played all year long. As Gannon will come in, Wittenberg will sit down. Now Fair is coming out of the ball game. What we see right here with Valvano bringing in his third guard, I think we're going to see a little delay by NC State. Corrin replaced. Fair. Nice job by McQueen right there, not giving off the ball easily. Eight minutes left in the game. Now you got Wittenberg sitting out of there. Let's see if State doesn't occupy the ball a little bit. Reach in that time by Banks. Bailey not affected by it. Rebound Hurd. Bailey shouldn't have taken that shot, and he knows it running down the court. And Valvano expressed his disbelief. He couldn't believe he took it. Here's Crosby. Oh, did he go high for that one, McQueen? Twelve rebounds for Kozell McQueen. Sidney Lowe realizing his partner's out of the ball game right now, probably going to occupy the ball a little bit himself. Archery trying to reach in, commits the foul. That's 17 fouls, so they'll start shooting free throws, and Fleming will come into the game now. Archery will go out. Well, he gave Fleming the break that he needed. Roy Hamilton, our spotter here today in regard to the, the uh, shot chart, said uh, an interesting thing to me. Uh, 
in the fact that Fleming uses a mouthpiece, which would make it even more difficult to get your breath in this type of altitude. Now coming back into Swittenberg, Lorenzo Charles will lead the game. Sidney Lowe at the line. Now, Billy, we've talked about Sidney Lowe, his assists. He has eight today. That's over his seasonal average of 7.4. Eight points, six rebounds also. Look how he shoots his free throws. Yeah. Now, Sidney feels very comfortable with that free throw shooting style, but it's not something that kids ought to copy. You notice that he's shooting against his body. He turns his feet in sideways. And, and shoots across his body, but I think it's typical of a lot of things in life. You, once you get comfortable with it, if you have confidence, that's the way you ought to put him up there. Gary. Watch, watch, Gary, how he turns his body against himself, has his feet facing the other direction, and still can hit him. He hadn't missed a free throw in the tournament. 78% for the year, too, and he almost missed that one. Substitution now, Derek Floyd has checked in, number 20 for Georgia, senior out of Miami, Florida. 7.26 left in the game, and you see the score. I think George ought to start putting the ball up from this side of the court because you got Wittenberg on the weak side defense. There's McQueen again. He has 12 rebounds, tipped it out. Come back. Almost a turnover in the backcourt by Fleming. Fleming showing he's maybe a little bit tired now. The officials have called a timeout. Checking was something at the 7.05 mark. All these kids are going to love that that official needs a little interpretation time because you've got uh, some kids that are very, very tired out there. Well, we'll try to discern what this is all about. Valvano wants two points on that tip in front of the free throw. Is that right? Do you think that's what he's arguing about? Well, you think, you think that he's asking the fact that Jimmy's just going to make fun of the whole deal. He said the other day when I started getting on his case in practice, he said, Billy, I'm just happy to be here. Well, they're going to, Dave Gabbett is standing directly behind the scorer's bench, and he think, I think his motion meant, let's keep it the way it is. Well, I think this little uh, interpretation by the officials is going to help NC State get their breath a little bit. Now, here's the shot. It comes off the rim. Oh, that's the debate. Well, I think it's a foul. You know, it's just a one-point deal anyway. It didn't come out of the cylinder, though. No, I, it hadn't come out of there. There's a steal attempt by Lowe. Nice job by Fleming. There's that 2 3 zone packed in more and more. Crosby, if you'll shoot from the, that side of the court, you've got Whitford back there. You just can't handle the rebounding, but when you shoot out front, there you have Thurl Bailey and Kozel McQueen can get him. And that's not the guy to shoot out there. Vern Fleming, his game is a transition game going inside. And he's got to be tired, Gary. He's been chasing on defense and having to handle the ball on offense. 30 points from the three guards, Gannon, Wittenberg, and Lowe for NC State. There's your time left in this game. The winner to play the winner of Houston and Louisville to follow. It's getting down to the point now where Georgia really has to take some gambling chances. And when you do, you can always have that man wide open under the basket. They're double teaming all over. He's got a long ways with these three guards, hasn't he? Now here's a little four-corner type tactic. Sidney Lowe getting himself in trouble, but has got the strength. Bailey, nice catch. Oh, oh some nice shot. basket. He was behind the backboard on that one. 16 points for the 6'11 senior, the all-ACC choice. 59-41, less than 5.45 to go. The biggest lead of the ball game now for North Carolina State. Timeout, Georgia. They've got to take one. They've got to get back in this thing. There's Ralph Sampson. He was here to receive the Player of the Year award. He'd like to be playing in this game. 5.41 to play. It's all over. Fleming playing with four fouls, but he's only scored six points in this game, well below his seasonal average of 17. Good drive. He challenged McQueen and Bailey's there, and McQueen and Bailey have been a real story in this game. What NC State's going to be able to do now, Georgia's crashing all five men on the boards, and with the great rebounding inside size that State has, they're going to be able to go long for an easy basket next minute or so. They're going to bring it in. The ball was kicked at the 527 mark. 59-41. What a story, this North Carolina State team. They didn't think Derek Wittenberg had even returned. They won the ACC tourney. Now trying to win nine in a row. Big pressure back nine. Here comes Bailey. Wittenberg did the wise thing. He realized they have enough points. Bailey was ready to go for the jam. Gary Gannon out of Joliet, Illinois. You see how Crosby tries to force Lowe down the sidelines to pick up the double team with Flair. 
Deflection by Terry Fair. Well, turnovers against NC State. That's traveling against Crosby. It's the second big play Gannon has made on defense. Getting in front to draw the charge. That time he didn't get the charge, he got the walk. Terry Gannon is a brilliant student in North Carolina State. He was in high school as well, and he plays very intelligently on the floor. You know, we almost have a reverse of the 1974 national championship. That day it was UCLA and NC State. Everybody said whoever wins that game will win the national crown. Kind of like the reverse of what we have today. And now you have NC State kind of the underdog role here. Well, they're saying the winner of this game will become the underdog Monday night, but they want to get to that position. I look back to 1975. There's a good steal. Hart Hurd's got the layup. <laughs> Quickness of Hurd, he led him in steals this year. They say he has the quickest hands in the SEC, and you can see it there. 59-43, excellent pressure. team. Wittenberg in trouble, he got out of it. It's 10 seconds, awful close. 4.22 left in the game. Hurd is so quick out here. He and Fleming at six foot five really make it tough for guards to throw over him. Oh, kind of playing the middleman now as they go to kind of a triangle situation. Ozell McQueen wisely throws the ball back out. Down to four minutes. And Gary, I was talking about 75. NC State was defending national champion, had the player of the year in David Thompson, and they didn't even get invited to the NCAA tournament because at that time they were just starting to take two teams from the conference, and they took North Carolina and Maryland. 3.45 now left. North Carolina State playing some keep away with a 59-43 lead. Double team. Hurd almost got it again, and he did. It's a turnover. It'll go to Georgia. Now, you, Wittenberg is usually not used to such quick hands and good-sized people double-teaming him. He's taking too much time with the ball. He's got to give it up quicker. Hurd, as we said, led him with 78 steals. He's already come up with one turnover here and a steal for a basket a moment ago. Georgia's got to start putting that ball up quicker. Here's Fair, lean in, and he's fouled by McQueen. That's four now on Kozell. Uh, Jim Valvano, that's, that's not a bad situation for him because at this stage of the game, if McQueen fouls out, he can come back with Charles because he'll be in the delay game anyway. Going to the line is Terry Fair. McQueen, we said, had 12 rebounds. It's the third time this year, Billy, that Kozell McQueen has been able to get 12. I don't think any more impressively than today. Now that ball, it'll have a two-shot foul. The ball just hitting the iron. Substitution coming back in will be Corrin, 31. But Terry Fair, only a 66% free throw shooter. You know, he hasn't scored in the second half. That's five points in the entire game for him. And here comes Corrin in, and Fair is going to leave. 3.32 left, 59-44. Fair going to get a rest. He'll be back in. I asked Terry Fair if his friend Dominique Wilkins had called him yet during the tournament. He said no, he had not. That kind of surprised me. He had a great game last night. 59-44. Wittenberg got it off by Corrin. And Wittenberg slow getting up. Here's Banks. Oh, Wittenberg had run down in the passing lane. He'd had the ball. Here's Crosby tipped up by Corrin. There's what he did against North Carolina. And you see Wittenberg was on that side of the zone. He can't handle those big fellas inside. Corrin now with six points. 59-46. Boys, a physically demanding come from behind bit by this Georgia team. Somehow Wittenberg got it loose. Two on one down here. Smart play by McQueen. He realizes time is the story here, not more points. Time, 2.45 left now. Low. Haley brings it back out. Reach around, and that will be off of Crosby of Georgia. Now, a lot of guys can't do that reach around. It's a, it's a technique that really isn't solid defense, but uh, guys that are effective with it certainly can get their hands on the ball. There's a steal. Ball broken up from Wittenberg. Crosby, nice pass to Fleming. And now, it's an 11-point game, and timeout being called by Georgia. Georgia now trying to regroup. Nobody guarding the man taking the ball out of bounds. State handles it pretty well. Here is low off to Gannon. Again, the three guards in now for Jim Valvano to go along with McQueen and this man, Bailey. There's a foul. Nice attempt by Corrin. Corrin's come in here and really helped him. What I think is hurting NC State here is their guards are catching the ball and then dribbling. And by doing that, they're allowing the double team to come on them. What they really need to do is catch that ball and pass it to the first free man to make the Georgia guards run so they can't get in the double team. And take some more time. 59-48, Thurl Bailey. 
What a game he's had, Billy. 16 points, 10 rebounds, and played a very intelligent game. In this little delay, he's been very wise. Bailey is a trombone and sax player. A thespian misses the free throw, and that could be a big mess. Nice move by Banks. They need to get it inside 10. This would do it. Tipped up. There's Hurd. It's going to count, and he's fouled by McQueen. McQueen committing the foul. And Gary, what we had right there is Georgia shooting the ball from the left-hand side of the court. When they did that, that left Wittenberg all alone over there for rebounding. And look at the size differential. He can't handle that side of the court rebounding-wise, so Georgia gets the easy basket. That was the fifth foul on McQueen. He fouls out of the ball game with eight points and 12 rebounds. So as you mentioned, they kept Lorenzo Charles standing by. He will now come into the ball game for NC State. Well, it probably helps Jim Valvano because Charles is a little better ball handler than McQueen, and NC State's job will be to hang on the ball. This guy's oh, played well. Hurd missing the free throw. Bottle! It doesn't go. Corrin tried to get it. A bottle by Fleming. Oh, unbelievable. That could have been a four-point trip down the floor for Georgia. State could have a layup here. Wittenberg two on one. It won't go down here. And here comes Fleming. Both teams missing short shots. Crosby. Oh, what a oh, play by yeah. Crosby. It's now 59 52 with a minute 51. And wow. what's happened here? We've got a foul. That foul is going to go on Hurd, I believe. Reaching over the back. Let's see what they call it. Well, there's no indication of a foul. They can just re inbounds it. That's what they did. No foul on the play. Here's Bailey. He missed the slam, and he's fouled by James Banks. That was a very big miss for Bailey. What happened, Billy, I think on the other end, is somebody kicked the ball, knocked it back out. They just reset it. Well, I really can't understand that, because if you touch the ball from inbounds when a man's holding it out of bounds, it's a technical foul. So I don't know what happened there. Bailey, who missed the slam, as you look the intensity look at, look now at, on the face of Banks. Intensity and exhaustion. These fellas are bending over, just trying to get that breath. Boy, that was a fast and furious couple of minutes, wasn't it? Bailey at the line. He missed the one a while to go, but he cashes this one in. 17 points. 60, 52, 142 left. Looked pretty good on the shot, just didn't go for him. And Georgia keeps pushing that ball down the court. Here's Fleming. Charles cuts off the baseline. Fleming somehow got the shot off. And no call. Ten points for Fleming and a timeout, Georgia. They got a timeout before the inbounds the ball. That's only one timeout left now for Georgia. And you see the frustration by McQueen, who fouled out moments earlier. I was kind of surprised that the bench gave up a little bit for Georgia. Look at Hugh Durham in the background there yelling on this inbounds pressure situation. They get it to Wittenberg. Georgia's fouling a lot right here. They've been getting away with it so far, but that aggressive pressure defense ought to put NC State on the line quite a bit the rest of the way. That's the second foul now on Lamar Hurd. That says a little something, doesn't it? The kid's been playing great defense all day, has quick hands, has only committed two fouls. And the other toughest time to shoot those free throws, not only when you're pressured, but also when you get very, very tired. It takes away your motion. Now, Wittenberg has 18 points as he goes to the free throw line, but only six of them this half. Part of that could be the fatigue factor. He is two of two from the line. Oh, I thought it was short. He looked good on it. 61-54, and now a battle will come back in for State. What we have right now, Jim Valvano doing what so many coaches do. They go ahead and put the big fella in for defense, and then they'll bring, uh, come right back in with Gannon on offense. In fact, Gannon isn't even sitting down. He's squatting down, waiting to re-enter the game. Wittenberg makes it 62-54. 20 points for him. Georgia going to put the ball up quickly. Crosby, oh, he's had a hot hand. He calls a timeout. That'll be the last. Georgia has exercised their last time out of this game with 122. It's 62-56, and Hugh Durham and the Georgia Bulldogs don't want their season to end. At 10 and 8, then Georgia, Tennessee, Bandy, and Mississippi State all tied again. There's the quick foul, the foul by Hartree. Now, Fleming will come in. The reason Fleming wasn't in, Billy, is he had four, four fouls, and they couldn't have used him for that inbounds foul. So Hartree will go out, Fleming will come in with the fourth foul. You were talking about the SEC. Did they drive the television tournament committee crazy? <laughs> Last really day of selections, 
everything was thrown up in the air. You know, it was interesting also that Georgia, Tennessee, Vanderbilt, Mississippi all tied for fourth place with nine and nine. They were all seven and two at home and two and seven on the road. Here's Gannon at the line. He is an excellent free throw shooter, shooting 91 percent. He hit 30 in a row at one time this year. There's Hugh Durham, and he realizes that he does not want to have this young man on that foul line if he can help it. But State wisely using three guards. I'm surprised Battle's not on the sideline to go in for Gannon. He missed it. What a touch. <laughs> oh, that ball was out and back in again. Well, you shoot 91%, you got to get a few rolls and like State that. State goes man to man a second. There's Crosby again, kicked by Fleming. Wittenberg over the back. It's going to be off of Wittenberg. Nice job by Fleming. He really goes to the boards well. Well, as we said, he led all Southeastern Conference guards in rebounding. And they're setting some screen. There's Gannon out there playing on him. Here's Fair who checked in. He's just been too strong with his shots. Fleming somehow gets now, it in. They cannot call any timeouts now. Down to one minute. Six-point game. North Carolina State almost thrown away. Low, Bailey. And he's fouled. Two shot. Two shot. That's Banks committing the foul. Two shot, but that's a good foul. We have down on the other end, Wittenberg tying up his shoe, just trying to get a breath. You know the teams, Houston and Louisville watching, are very aware of how tired these teams are. they got to be thinking about that. Now, fortunately, the winner will have a day off. They will certainly need it. Georgia's outscored North Carolina State 15 to 5 in the last five and a half minutes. Our statistician Mike Swanson is always on top of it. Haley was 17 points, one of three from the line, 10 rebounds. Little shot. He's got a couple of them. Well, he's backing off the line. He's shooting the ball and then backing off the line quickly. You find good free throw shooters, he'll stay right on that line. 54 seconds left. A six point lead for State. He hit that one in State on that line. Nice and solid. Here comes Fleming, who's made a very fine second half appearance after being shaky in the first half. Rebound tipped up by Banks. Oh, are they tough in there? Fleming goes down over Wittenberg. And the alternating held ball will go to Georgia. Georgia will inbound. Now, the reason that wasn't a foul, that time when Fleming went up there, Wittenberg was on the floor. Fleming came down on top of him. That is going to be Georgia's ball out of bounds. The alternating held ball goes to the Bulldogs. You notice how tough Fleming is as a penetrator. He can go inside and get it over the top of the big people. Here's Wittenberg not able to hold his ground down there. And there's Fleming coming over the top of him. Boy, that was quite a collision. Now, Valvano's going to bring in yeah. Alvin Battle. And I thought he'd have Battle ready to come in the last time Gannon went to the foul line. Gives him a little more size on the back line. So Gannon will exit. 43 seconds left, 65, 58. Fleming almost thrown away and broken up. Saved by Fair. Blocked that time. What a play by Battle, who just checked in. And there's the good piece of coaching by Alvano. He wouldn't have even been in position to be in the game if Alvano hadn't made that substitution. Here's Battle. And he lost it. I don't know how he did, but he did. Here comes Crosby. 22 seconds to Fleming. He missed it. Fleming again. What a workhorse he is. They laid off of him. Didn't want to commit the foul. It's a five-point game. And down to 15 seconds. 65-60. They need a foul. They need a foul. They're so tired they can't get to him. Bailey scores. It's the ball game. 67-60. North Carolina State has won their 25th game of the year against 10 setbacks. 